space partitioning. So previously we saw that ray tracing can be quite expensive because in the naive case we need to check the intersections between every ray and every triangle. This is where space partitioning can help us. So let's look at this case. Let's say that we have this 2D ray and these line segments. And we need to find out which of these line segments this ray intersects with. So the first idea would be to have an axis line grid. So we have a grid and we check only the cells that this ray passes. All of these cells would know if they have a line segment in them or not. And if they do, only then do we do the ray triangle intersection testing. This means that when we start the ray over here, well, we can first check the cell the ray starts in. We see that there are no line segments in that cell. So we move on to the next cell. We check that, well, this cell is empty too. So we go to the next cell. So over here, we do have a line segment that is crossing this cell. So we would check the intersection between this line segment and the ray. And depending on the implementation, we would already get the intersection point over here. But regardless, we do not have to ever test the intersections with these other line segments that are not on the ray's path. The problem here is that most of these cells are empty. So we would waste a lot of time checking those empty cells. Another idea would be to use a quad tree or an oak tree. So a quad tree or an oak tree actually splits the space depending on the geometry in that space. So if there is more geometry in some section of the space, there will be more cells. And if there is less geometry, there will be less cells and they will be larger. We will see an example how this is created in a moment. But here we can see for this space partitioning, we only need to check this cell. This is empty and then we already move on to a cell that has line segments in it. So here is an example of how a quad tree works. So a quad tree is just a two dimensional tree and an oak tree would be three dimensional. So let's say we have this space here and we add some geometry or some data points into it. So right now we have this point one and if we keep adding points, then this space is going to get split. And right now it splits it when we have over four different points in one cell. So there will be more cells in the areas where the data is denser and less cells and bigger cells where there is no data present. The third idea would be to split the space by the median value in different axes one at a time. So this is what is called a KD tree. So we first look at an X axis and we split the space by the median value on the X axis. Then we have two sides, left side and right side, and we split those spaces vertically based on the median value on the y-axis. This might give us a bit better cells because there is always some line segments in a cell. For example, here we are starting the ray in this cell. We would check against this line segment. Then we move to that cell. We check against this line segment and then we move to the third cell and we check against that one. The issue with KD trees is that they need to be rebuilt. For example, here we have a KD tree and when we add new values here, then nothing really happens. So after we have added some data, we would actually need to rebuild the entire tree. And it will look different because the median values are now different. So changes in one area of a KD tree actually affect the entire KD tree. This was not the case with oak trees and quad trees. There is this other space partitioning tree called a binary space partitioning tree. So this actually divides the space using the geometry itself. So all of these line segments or triangle faces in 3D would split the space recursively. And there is still yet another idea, a bounding volume hierarchy tree. So instead of checking the ray triangle intersections, we could use simpler shapes to encapsulate our complicated objects. So for example, here we have these complicated meshes encapsulated in a circle and this eight top and these are also encapsulated in this AABB which is just a box so we can first check the ray and box intersection and then we see yes this ray intersects this box then we see that inside this box we have a circle and this eight top so we check against the circle we see that no it doesn't hit the circle but it does hit this eight top and when we know that, only then we move on to testing against the triangles of this complex cat mesh. These operations here are axis-aligned bounding box, oriented bounding box, 
and this eight discrete oriented polytype. We will learn more about these in a later video. In space partitioning, it's also possible to combine the different methods. And some of these methods are better for dynamic scenes and some better for static scenes. As we saw with the KD3, if the scene changes, then we need to rebuild the KD3. With Quad3, rebuilding a subsection of the tree is much easier. You can of course learn more about this in different online sources. And a term you could search for is ray tracing acceleration structures. And there is a lot of discussion which of these structures are better or worse in some specific cases. Now from this video, you should understand space partitioning, its purpose, why we're using it. One of the reasons is to accelerate ray tracing, to make it more optimized, so that we don't have to check against every triangle in the scene for every ray, but we do a smart selection of the triangles beforehand. We also saw these different space partitioning methods that help with that. An axis aligned grid, quad or oct tree, KD tree, binary space partitioning tree, and a bounding volume hierarchy tree.